Hello everyone and welcome back to another Lolita Fashion Sew With Me video where I continue to put out the Lolita sewing content that I want to see and share with you all my adventures in creating some of my own handmade Lolita pieces. In today's video, I'll be working from another one of my Otome no sewing books in order to make this ridiculously cute, fully sheared JSK to wear throughout the remaining summer months. I basically love everything about this JSK, including the fact that this model is wearing it without a blouse. Um, yes, break all the rules. I love it. And I also have a fabric that I've been saving specifically for this project that I'm super looking forward to using. So without further ado, let's get started. Starting off first with the materials as always. For my main fabric, I'll be using three yards of this Beyond Cute Lavender Gingham Polyester Poplin, which did I mention is Beyond Cute? No? Okay, now you know. Um, I feel like the camera honestly doesn't do it justice here, but this is just a really nice mid-weight fabric that's opaque enough to where I felt like aligning wasn't really necessary. So this is actually the only fabric I'll be working with for this project as I won't be attaching aligning to this dress. For the lace, I'll be using around five yards of this white edging lace that I actually cut off of this main piece of lace that you see here. It was the top and bottom of it, but I just cut it off. And we'll now be using it along the bottom of each of the tiers to add a little bit of decoration. This pattern doesn't actually call for any kind of lace, but I thought it would look cute, so I'm going for it. To create the showing on the bodice, I'll be using this white elastic thread as well as this regular flat elastic. The original pattern only calls for flat elastic. However, I really wanted to try using this elastic thread for this project. And also at the time that I filmed this, I just didn't have a lot of flat elastic so that's what we're going with and I ended up creating this kind of hybrid combination using the two which I will show you later how I did. And lastly for the shoulder straps I'll just be using some of this lightweight fusible interfacing to make sewing them a little easier. Moving on to the mock-up since the pattern for this dress is literally just a bunch of different sizes of rectangles similarly to the previous JSK I made I didn't bother to make a complete mock-up for this dress since the only thing I really needed to test out was sewing with the elastic thread as that was something I had never done before and oh my god I am so glad that I did because as you can see <laughs> there were a lot of failures before there were successes but eventually I was able to figure it out and create something with attention that I liked which only ended up needing slight adjustments to the length as you can see here and ultimately I ended up being very satisfied with the end result. Once I had that figured out I then moved on to marking out all of my pattern pieces onto my fabric using pins before cutting them out. Out. Since the pattern is really just, again, a bunch of different sizes of rectangles, I just used the lines that were already on the fabric as a guide to measure and cut out all of my pattern pieces because uh, why work harder when you don't need to? With everything nicely cut out, I then moved on to serging all of my pieces to prevent them from fraying, which is something I really wish I had done for my first JSK project. Flashback. I just wanted to point out this zigzag stitch that I did on the sides of the skirt pieces because the fraying got to me. It did. Also, just gonna take a moment to call myself out and point out the fact that I do in fact own um, a serger. That thing is the serger. But as you can see, it's it's up there, and I'm not. And yeah, so anyways. End of flashback. Moving on to the construction. I started off first by sewing together and having the bottom edge of all my skirt ruffle pieces. There were four ruffle pieces in total, so I sewed two together that would be used for the front half of the skirt, and two that would be used for the back half of the skirt. Next, I sewed two rows of gathering stitches along the top edge of all my ruffle and skirt pieces to ensure that all the gathers throughout the dress would be as even as possible. This was actually the first time I used the double gather method in a project, so I'm really curious to see how well it will turn out in the end. With the gathering stitches in place and the ruffle nicely hemmed, I can now move on to assembling the skirt portion of the dress. Starting first by gathering down one of the ruffle pieces and pinning it to the bottom edge of one of my tier 3 pieces. From there, the process was pretty much the same with me gathering down one tier, pinning it to another tier, Thank you. 
and repeating the process again until all the tiers were connected. Then I just sewed all the tears together using a straight stitch on my machine. And just like that, the first half of my skirt was complete. To get the second half of the skirt, I just repeated the same process again to give me both a front and back piece for my dress. Next, it was time to add on some pockets using one of the pocket patterns that I traced from another dress in my closet. Then starting from the top of the first tier, I measured down four inches before pinning and sewing the pockets in place. Then with the right sides facing in, I pinned and sewed both of my skirt pieces together along the side seams. And here's what everything looks like all sewn together. I chose to do inseam pockets for this dress, which essentially helps prevent the pocket from peeking out of the sides of your dress whenever you take your hands in and out. And I'm so happy with how it turned out. To finish up the skirt portion of the dress, the last thing I needed to do was attach the lace along the bottom of each of the tiers. Starting at the side seams, I pinned the lace to the bottom of each of the tiers, making sure to push the seam allowance on the back side of the dress up towards the top, and then using a straight stitch, sew the lace onto the dress. I feel like this is a very common design feature on a lot of tiered dresses to use lace over the tier connections, so I wanted to try it out on mine, and I'm actually really happy that I ended up doing that because I really like how it turned out in the end. After I attached the lace, I decided to take a few minutes to clean up the front of the skirt a little bit by removing any visible gathering stitches, as well as clipping any loose threads I may have missed, or oh, I don't know, this little gem here where I accidentally sewed one of my pockets while I was sewing on the lace to the front of the dress, like... Yeah, I don't know. It happens. Thankfully though, it was a really quick fix and I was able to re-sew on that section of lace, making sure this time, however, to pin the pocket far away from where I was sewing and then continue on with my skirt cleanup before moving on to the bodice. Once that was done, I took my main bodice pieces, placing them right sides together and pinned them along the side seams before sewing them together. I decided to make life easier on myself by ironing open both the side seams as well as ironing down the top edge of the bodice that will create both the top ruffle and elastic channel. This bodice pattern actually doesn't include a top ruffle but I thought it would be cute so I decided to add it on during the mock-up stage by adding an additional half inch to the top to create a small 1 4th inch wide ruffle. Then with the right sides together, I pinned the bodice to the skirt at the side seams and gathered down the top edge of my skirt to fit along the bottom edge of my bodice before sewing them together. Mm -hmm. 
It's important to note here that the seam allowance I'm using is 3 eighths of an inch wide so that I have enough fabric to create the elastic channel for the bottom portion of the bodice. Then I flip the dress around to the right side and top stitch along the bottom edge of where I sewed the skirt and bodice together, making sure during this part that the seam allowance on the back is pushed up towards the top of the dress. To create the elastic channel that goes along the bottom portion of the bodice slash top of the skirt, I just use all this extra fabric or seam allowance that you see here from where I sewed the bodice and skirt pieces together, push it up towards the top of the bodice, which thanks to the top stitching I did earlier is a lot easier to do, and then sewed along the top edge here to create a small channel for the elastic. And here's what the elastic channel looks like after being sewn from both the front side and the back side. Also, no, your eyes aren't deceiving you. That lace wasn't there before. I sewed it on last minute thinking it would be cute to have lace on the bottom of the bodice area where the elastic channel was, but <laughs> it really wasn't. So I do end up removing it later on. For the top portion of the bodice, I sewed two lines of stitches, one one fourth of an inch away from the top to create the little top ruffle I talked about earlier, and the other a half an inch away from my previous line of stitches to create the top elastic channel for the bodice. For this line of stitches, I made sure to leave a small opening along one of the side seams so that the elastic can be inserted later on. Next, I move on to assembling the shoulder straps for the dress, starting first by ironing on some of this lightweight interfacing to help keep the straps from shifting around when I go to sew them later on. And here's what the shoulder straps look like after being ironed. This little open section that you see here is where I plan to insert the shoulder ruffle later on, so I'm just showing you here a close-up of what that looks like before I attach them. Next, I gathered down each of the ruffles for the shoulder straps and inserted them inside the little opening before sewing it in place. To attach the shoulder straps to the dress, I measured in 3.5 inches starting from the side seam and pinned the straps in place before sewing them along the top and bottom stitches that I made previously. Then starting at the side seam on the front of the dress, I made a mark every 1 and 1 4 inch to mark out the sewing lines for the elastic shirring. One of the plus sides of using fabric that already has lines on it is also having a built-in sewing guide to help you when you're doing this, so I definitely use that to my advantage here. In total, I sewed 4 rows of shirring across the bodice and made sure that for each row I left enough length of the elastic thread so that it could be tied off on the inside of the dress later on. Then came probably the most satisfying part of this entire project and that was steaming the elastic shirring and watching it get smaller and smaller and being like, ah, this is so satisfying. <laughs> To secure all of the elastic thread like I mentioned earlier, I just tied them together to create these little knots that you see here along the side seam. And to secure the regular thread, I just reset my machine back to normal and did a few back stitches in place. Next, I inserted the flat elastic inside the top and bottom channels of the bodice. Sewed the elastic together to secure it, and then sewed the channel openings closed.
after I finished inserting the elastic, I took a few minutes to remove the lace that you may have seen in the past few clips that was along the bottom area here and instead sewed it along the sides of the shoulder straps to help bring some of the lace onto the bodice and in my opinion, it looks so much better. So at this point in the project, I only had little things left to do like attaching these little bows that go on the front of the dress. sewing on the neckties which I decided to make detachable by sewing on some buttonholes as well as these tiny little buttons on the inside of the shoulder straps and the last thing I had left to do was just to make a headpiece since I wasn't super excited about the tiny little bows that the model was wearing in the picture so I decided to make this one instead and I think it turned out pretty good and then finally after three and a half months of procrastination just general life stuff and on and off sewing this project was now finally Finally complete. dress seriously i love this dress it is so cute and so comfortable and is honestly like the perfect go-to dress to wear during the warmer months when you're really not trying to sweat it out in your expensive brand like do you see this dress it is so cute you guys i can't i cannot even i just can't all right, so looking at the bodice, I'd say one of my favorite details are definitely the neckties, which of course are detachable in case I want to wear the dress without them. For the main part of the dress, I of course love that this dress has pockets because all dresses should have pockets, as well as all the lace that I decided to put on the tiers of the dress. I still think that was such a good idea. Pat myself on the back. Yes, I will. I also really love the fabric that I chose for this project, which I think will also work really great for some nice springtime cords as well. Plus, I don't think you can ever really go wrong using gingham fabric to make Lolita clothes since it's such a staple print that's super easy to cord with. I decided to put together a really simple cord wearing this short sleeve baby cut sew that has sheer sleeves because <laughs> ventilation and I actually think it looks really cute with a blouse as well so I can definitely see myself getting a lot of wear out of this dress during the slightly cooler months of the year too which is great. Overall though, I'm really happy with how everything turned out and I'm very excited to be adding this dress to the rest of my handmade Lolita wardrobe. And for those of you who also like this dress and would be interested in making one of your own, I've gone ahead and put a link in my description to the fully translated English copy of this book that includes all of the instructions and information on how to make this dress as well as all of the other items found within the Otome no Sewing Book Volume 1. Yay, free resources! <laughs> But okay, I think that's it for this video. Thank you to all the people who have subscribed to my channel throughout my little four month hiatus. <laughs> Though that was not intentional, uh, and who have helped me reach over 1600 subscribers. Holy crap, how did that happen? Where did you come from? I don't know, but thank you. <laughs> uh, seriously, thank you all so much for the support and honestly just showing an interest in this kind of content at all. And I will try not to let as much time pass before I upload my next video. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in my next one. Bye!